Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. <clears throat> Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation? Amen. St. James says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. We don't like change. Change is literally taking a different and unknown future course. It makes us uneasy and uncertain of what will happen. For instance, we don't like changes to our flight plans. Most people don't mind if you get a phone call the night before saying your flight is delayed by two hours, but if you wake up at five o'clock in the morning, rush to the airport without showering, and by the time you get to your terminal, they say, Oh, by the way, your flight's been delayed four and a half hours. You're not a happy hiker having to sit in the terminal. But then you're also uncertain because you don't know, will this be the only delay I have today? A change in flight plans. Or maybe a change in the weather. You look at the weather channel and it says that Saturday morning will be a nice day, partly cloudy, perfect day for some bocce ball, if you're one of those blessed people that enjoys bocce ball. And a nice picnic outside with three crazy boys. But when you wake up and there are dark clouds on the horizon and raindrops start falling on you, then you realize you're stuck in the house all day with those same crazy boys. Or maybe dinner plans change. You have that reservation at the nice restaurant downtown, and when you get there ten minutes late, they've given your table to somebody else. You aren't happy about that change. Or maybe a change in government. You liked the last guy, you voted for the last guy, but you didn't vote for the new guy. You don't believe in the changes that he can make. So you're unhappy, uncertain because the country is taking a new direction, a new course under its current administration. And it makes you uneasy. Or maybe it's a simple change like a TV show. Now, I'm, I'm going to break this to you all. This may come as a surprise to you. Every guy that goes to seminary is not a cool guy. He is a geek or a nerd to some extent. Now, there are some guys that are cooler than other ones, but you're just cool in comparison to another geek. That's just all guys who go to seminary. It's the reality. Sorry. Pa Pastor Hewen's cool, though. He's a cool guy. I'm a geek. So as a geek... I enjoy a certain TV show that comes from England, and some of you may know it, or some of you may not like me after I say I watch this show, called Doctor Who. Now, Doctor Who is a show that has crazy people that follow it. I mean, they're, they're crazy people. What happens in the Doctor Who show is the main character, the doctor, he doesn't die. He does something called regenerate. So what happens to him is as he reaches the end of his life, his character changes. Literally, they take a new actor to play the doctor. And everybody gets so up in arms about who this new guy will be. I liked the older one, not this new guy. But what do they still do? They watch the show, and then they love the new guy. Or maybe you're like the other part of me that's the inner redneck. I remember one of the saddest days in my life was when the good guy in wrestling, the best good guy, Hulk Hogan, became a bad guy, became Hollywood Hogan. How I was so sad and depressed, my redneck attitude. But those are minor changes. We have serious ones that happen in life. The death of a family member a terrible disease that plagues you, 
or plagues a loved one. My wife is struggling with that now with her nephew on life support. Or maybe a friend moves away or changes their attitude towards you and is no longer a friend but a foe. Or maybe a change in church. This should be the place of constants, right? But there are changes. Pastors come and pastors go. And with each new pastor that comes or goes, there are changes. And we don't like it. We don't like changes because it makes us uncomfortable. Or better yet, it makes us uncertain with what will happen. This is why St. James speaks of God's unchanging will. And because God's will is unchanging, His Word is unchanging. And what is God's unchanging Word? God's unchanging Word is the message of Ezekiel that says, Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live. The unchanging law changes us by putting our sin and wickedness to an end. No justifications can live up to the law. It shuts every mouth and stops every heart. The law is not preached so that you can know how you're messing up and then have the answer to how to do better. Then you'll just be depressed, sad, and anxious because you never live up to the commands that the law declares. No, the law is proclaimed for the sole purpose that the unchanging gospel may bring forth life in you that it may be proclaimed without any merit or worthiness in us. The law leaves you empty, dead to the good, as Luther said in his hymn, in order that the gospel may do all the work. But what does that unchanging gospel do? It does nothing but constantly forgive. The gospel gives forgiveness all the time. Dr. Martin Franzman, a hymn writer and theologian who taught at some other seminary in the Missouri Synod, located in Missouri, says that Christ gives to all without respect of persons, without distinction in his generosity. And he does give generously, liberally, without any secondary motives, wholly and purely from the will to give. And he gives unreservedly, without reproach. His name is Giver God. The gospel never changes. It doesn't forgive one minute and withhold forgiveness the next. It is the proclamation of the eternal sacrifice of your Lord Jesus Christ, for new life in Him, your salvation. It doesn't change. It always forgives. As sure as your sin is on the body of Christ, so is your name written in the book of life forever. No changes. Written in blood, not pencil. The gospel is a gift. Graciously given to us, from our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not something that we earn. And this is where all the problems come in. There's this bad thing that the old Adam loves, and it's a system known as synergism, or the understanding that we cooperate with God in matters of our salvation. I have to do just a little bit to merit the grace of Christ. Now, we Lutherans would say, no, 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 pastor, that is not true. We don't have free will. We have a bound will. We don't cooperate with Christ. He does it all for us. But the problem is, you don't live that way. How many of you, after forgiven your sin, live life as if that sin never happens? Because that's how Christ sees it. Now, it... It did happen, but he no longer counts it against you. It is forgotten in his mind, yet your mind still remembers it. And what do you do with that memory? 
You don't rush again to absolution because I would see each and every one of you every single morning for holy absolution, but I don't. Unless you're all going to see... Do they come see you every morning? Audience participation, no. So that's not what we're doing, you know? What we do is we try to do better the next day. I'm going to try to get over this sin by getting back into the law, by cooperating with God in my Christian life. Stop doing that. This system is based on us using what is within us, our free will to cooperate with God against sin and the devil, where faith becomes a decision to accept or continue in the gospel. But Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear Fruit. No, the unchanging gospel, the forgiveness of your sin isn't given to you the hour you first believe or make the choice for Jesus. No, St. James says of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The unchanging gospel is and will always be given to you solely out of the abundance of your heavenly Father's love and gut-wrenching mercy for you. It is a free gift, claiming you as His own outside of and in spite of your rejection of His Son, Jesus the Christ. So peace be with you. And rejoice, beloved first fruits of God's creation, and receive now with meekness the implanted word of the gospel. Receive the gift of the bloody cross and the empty tomb. This day, by the authority given to me by our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. The sin of doubt, the sin of unbelief, the sin of anxiety, the sin of depression, the sin of stress, the sin of whatever. Whatever it is that plagues you in the deep hours of the night that you don't tell anybody else about, that sin that endures in your gut is absolved, forgotten in the mind of Christ. Though everything in your life may be changing, and it is, there are no certainties in this life. Every day is a change. Take heart and be at peace. This word of forgiveness never changes, but is with you always until you breathe your last breath. May this word of forgiveness, this holy and unchanging gospel, restore and refresh you to go back out into this world of unending strife. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.